The video was prepared especially for the AK Cassian channel. Greetings, France. Recently, we have looked at many interesting and useful microchips together. I got fascinated by this topic, and as a result, the idea for this video came up. Today, I would like to talk about a microchip that is part of the Soviet microprocessor set KR58653. I want to share my experience, which might help you if you also want to explore this microchip. This microchip is a functional copy of the Intel 8253, a programmable timer. With the help of programmable timers, the processor can create time intervals of arbitrary duration, synchronize with external devices, organize event counters, and keep track of the current time. In general, drawing an analogy with modern computers, this is the task of the Southbridge. However, the Soviet equivalent of the microchip, the 6-53, became most famous in our country as a sound generator chip. Various sound systems were made based on these microchips. For example, in the Mikrosha, AGT, Vector 06C, and BYT computers, the 6-53 was used for sound output. There was also a synthesizer that included as many as eight of these microchips. Let's take a look at the block diagram of the KR586-53. It consists of three independent 16-bit programmable counters and a control unit. Each channel has two clock inputs and a strobe input or enable input and one output. The microchip operates in one of six modes. The operating mode of each channel and the bit width of the channel counter are selected by writing a control word into the control register of the microchip. For sound generation, the microchip was switched to two modes. This is either the third mode, which turns the counter into a tunable divider with a frequency, bit width of 16 bits. In this case, a square wave is produced at the output. And the first mode, in which a pulse is formed at the counter's output, the duration of which depends on the value in the counter register. Now let's figure out how to make this microchip work. The sound output was generated differently in various computers. For example, in the Vector 060 computer, signals from all three outputs were connected to the output amplifier through resistors. That is, the volume was not adjustable via software. And I conducted my first experiments using exactly this scheme. A standard Arduino is quite sufficient to connect everything. We need to connect eight data lines, three gate lines, a write input, and two address lines A0, and A1 to the Arduino. Connect the read line to the power supply. Connect the enable input to ground. Initialize the ports for output. Set the write input to a high level. Now you need to properly configure the E53 on all three channels. Here, I can advise you to browse the datasheet for the foreign equivalent of this microchip. Intel 8253. In the Russian version, the information is quite unclear. As always, actually. In general, for configuration, set a high level on lines A0 and A1, after which you need to set the required data on the lines. D. The format is as follows. D7 and D6 are the most significant bits, which is the channel number. Set D5 and D4 to 1. In this case, the microchip will expect 16 bits of data, first the lower byte, then the upper byte. D3, D2, and D1 are for mode selection. We are interested in mode 3, so D1, and D2 are set to high level. D0 is for selecting the mode of the incoming number. There is binary and binary coded decimal. For greater accuracy, it's better to use binary code. Now, a pulse needs to be applied to the right line to record the data. To do this, set the line to 0, and then set it back to 1. That is, for setting up all three channels, the sequence of actions is as follows. We set the address lines to ones, wrote the data to the output, lowered the input, records, raised the input, records, wrote the next data to the output. Lower, raise the write input, and write the data to the output again. And for the last time, toggle the write line. All right, we have initialized the A3 outputs. Now we need to write a value to the counter, for example, of the first channel. To do this, set the address to 00, zero and write on the D lines. First, the lower byte. After that, toggle the right line and write the upper byte. And toggle the right line again. Now, all that's left is to set the gate line to high. And a signal will appear at the output. After assembling the next circuit, I tried to play some melody. I chose the theme from the X files. I used a frequency table for notes and a MIDI file with the original track. Knowing the clock frequency, which in my case was 2 MHz, I calculated the coefficients for all possible notes and then use them, inputting manually.
It sounds a bit off, though inspiring. At this stage, Maxim Kryakov, for which we are very grateful, suggested reproducing WGM files recorded for the SN 76489 chip. 76,489. This is a specialized sound generator chip. It has three sound channels, one noise channel, and each of these channels can also change the amplitude. After diving into all of this, I got the following sound. Here I realized that I needed a noise channel and a volume control for each channel. And I developed an experimental circuit board to test whether my idea would work at all. And here's what I came up with. There are two chips on the board. 6-53. There is a noise generator, assembled on discrete logic, and each of the channels passes through a buffer on MAND gates, for volume control. To be able to control all of this, I sequentially connected a total of 5 HC595 shift registers. The sound turned out as follows. The noise generator is assembled according to the following scheme. A 16-bit shift register and two feedback lines. One line simply connects the output to the input, resulting in what is called periodic noise. Essentially, you get a short pulse at the output, appearing at the input frequency. The second mode is capturing using an exclusive, or. This results in white noise. Both of these modes are initialized the same way. A 1 in the first bit, followed by 15 zeros. To achieve this, I made taps through switches. This element blocks the clock input. Using this element, or not, I manually supply clock pulses to the shift registers. Here, the input data value enters, and this line is used to switch modes between periodic and white noise. At the moment of initialization, it is necessary to disconnect the clock source, set the data line to zero, and apply 15 pulses to the shift register. After that, set it to one and give one more clock pulse. We get the initial state. Now set the required mode. Then activate the clock input. Now, how I implemented the level regulator. Each channel goes to five elements, and not. The outputs of the logic elements are combined into one point through resistors of different ratings. At the output, we get a change in amplitude from 0 to 5 volts. This is the so-called DAC based on a resistive matrix with weighted, binary weighted resistances. Ideally, each resistance should be twice as large as the previous one. We feed all this into a buffer on an operational amplifier. From several buffers, everything is combined into one point onto another operational amplifier, already in the inverting amplifier configuration. And from this output, the sound was recorded such a wonderful microchip, the KR580V53, 980V53. It was an interesting experience working with digital sound synthesis. A huge thank you to everyone for watching the video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, don't forget to support me with a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Wishing you all good health. This was Andre with you. Goodbye.